This video is sponsored by the Vlogbrothers Creator Fund. I've spent a lot of time on this channel talking about how some AI systems take a ton of computational resources to train to the point of being useful. Today I want to tackle the other end of that spectrum. How can we use complex AI systems on things like our phones or tablets? This is challenging for a few reasons. You have less computational power in the form of things like GPUs to train on, so a model that might take a few hours to train on a GPU might take days to train on your phone. At the same time, you're limited by the battery of whatever system that you're working with. If you have a model that will take days to train on a phone, but your battery life is only six hours, you have a problem. Additionally, deep learning models, which are often useful in complex tasks, are often so big that it would be challenging to fit them on a mobile device in the first place. However, there are a few ways to approach this challenge. One of them is something like federated learning, which I've talked about in an earlier video, where you might be able to distribute parts of your model across multiple different devices, train small amounts of data locally, and then bring that information back to a centralized, larger model that has access to more computing resources. Another approach, which we'll talk about today, is to scale down the model itself so that it can fit on a smaller device. In this case, that device is a Raspberry Pi. For anyone who isn't familiar with them, Raspberry Pis are essentially small computers. They can do most things that your laptop can, like run web browsers and word processors, but aren't quite as powerful. However, they can be used to run machine learning models, and today we're going to have it run a scaled down version of the AlphaGo model, which has been used to beat some of the world's best Go players. We'll be doing this with the help of an Edge TPU accelerator, which allows us to push some of the more computationally intensive parts in the model off onto something other than the Pi. You don't need this to do machine learning on a Raspberry Pi, but it does make our lives a little bit easier. Also, for those curious, we're going to be using a Pi 4. There are a couple different versions of the Pi that are out right now, and this should work on a Pi 3 or a Pi 4. If you'd like to follow along at home, I'm going to skip over how to set up the Pi initially. There are a lot of tutorials on how to do that. It depends on whether you're running on Mac, Windows, or Linux. So I'll include a bunch of resources for all those operating systems in the description box below. I will assume that you have gotten to the point where you can access the Pi through a VNC viewer or some other remote access program like this. From here, we're largely going to follow the instructions for how to set up Minigo from Google's website with a few small adjustments after some troubleshooting on my end. Pi's run on Linux, so we're going to follow the Linux section of this with one adjustment. After step two, you should run this command. It installs the Edge TPU library, which you need to get through the rest of this demo. Why is that not in the instructions? Great question. I figured it out through trial, error, and stack overflow. From here, we can install TensorFlow Lite. TensorFlow is a machine learning library that's developed and maintained by Google. It's not my library of choice, but it is very commonly used in the field. So if you're interested in getting into machine learning research, I'd highly recommend becoming familiar with it. TensorFlow Lite allows us to take standard TensorFlow models, which might be pretty big, and reformat them in a way that can be loaded onto things like a Raspberry Pi. It also comes with pre-trained models, so we can use machine learning on the Pi without having to actually develop a model from scratch. Now it's time to set ourselves up with AlphaGo. Again, the instructions can be found on Google's website, but I'm going to walk us through it because there are a couple places that I had to troubleshoot just in case you do too. First, we make sure that the Edge TPU library is already imported. This was that extra line that I had you run in the first part that they for some reason don't include in the instructions, but that is necessary to get through this one. Now we're going to load up our Minigo models. Minigo is essentially the TensorFlow Lite version of AlphaGo, so we can use it on the Pi without any issues. We're going to load it in a virtual environment, which allows us to install certain code libraries without affecting any other projects that we're currently working on. This is useful if you're working on projects that involve code libraries that might either depend on each other or conflict with each other, and so it keeps everything separate so that everything works. Once the Minigo model is loaded, we can run it. This creates two different versions, one where the algorithm plays against itself and another where you can play against the algorithm. I've modified the code for the latter slightly in this example so that we can also see how the algorithm is picking where it should place its next tile. In essence, what it does is run through different potential moves and how we might respond to those moves to pick the best option that allows it to win the game, not necessarily to have the upper hand for the next move. 
You can also train a model directly on the Pi if you're interested in doing that. This is a little bit more complicated because you need to have a slightly better understanding of how this algorithm works on the level of code. But essentially what you can do is create a model that has randomized weights at the beginning so it doesn't have any prior knowledge of how to play the game. Have it play against itself several hundreds to thousands of times and then it train a new model on the outcome of the most recent of those games so it learns the best practices that the original model has learned so far. And that's one example of how to use machine learning on a smaller device. This is a great way to learn how to use machine learning on a smaller device and I take no credit for the instructions and the demos that people have been able to develop through Google. But hopefully this is a helpful demo for those of you who may not have a Raspberry Pi on hand and is helpful for anyone who's actually trying to walk through the demo themselves because I know I had a lot of issues getting through it due to either missing instructions or things that just didn't make sense to me at the time or having to go through the code line by line to figure out how to get that extra information on how the algorithm was deciding where to put the pieces. If you want me to do more videos with smaller devices like the Pi, you can let me know by smashing that like button, subscribing to my channel, and letting me know in the comments. As always, thank you to my patrons and thanks again to the Vlogbrothers Creators Fund for sponsoring this video. And if you'd like to follow my PhD life offline, you can find me on the social medias. Otherwise, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!